Hey guys, welcome back to Here We Mow Again. I'm Jeff and this is Billy. Today we're gonna to continue on our fall renovation project and we're gonna put down some seed and some fertilizer. So let's go ahead and get to it. One thing we need to discuss initially is what type of seed I'm gonna use. This video is not gonna to go too deep into grass seed. I may do that in another video, but what I will tell you is that I used 100% turf type tall fescue last year and I had really good results and I'm gonna do the same thing this year. A couple years ago, I used a blend that had tall fescue and Kentucky bluegrass. That came out really nice as well. I tend to stick with the tall fescues though because they're lower maintenance. They require a little less water and a little less fertilizer. So it allows me to have a nice green thick lawn and not spend a ton of money and not have to go out here every couple weeks or every month and apply fertilizer. So for me, that's, that's good. It saves me time, saves me money, and my lawn still looks really good. As you can see in the background, it's looking pretty rough right now. I cut it extra short, as you saw in the last video, and I aerated, um, there's plugs all over the place. So it's definitely ready for some seed. It might be a little hard to see in this video since I cut the lawn so short and I just aerated, but this area that I'm showing here actually had a pool in it last year. And so it was literally down to bare dirt and I reseeded it with 100% turf type tall fescue. And that's what I'm gonna use again this year. I had really good results. Last year I used the GCI turf type tall fescue and I'm gonna do the same thing this year. It grew in really thick and dark green and I really liked how it was drought tolerant and it really made my yard pop. The first thing that I like to do is to see the areas that are completely bare and to work it in with my garden weasel to make sure that the seed gets in nice and thick and then I'll go over the rest of the lawn and this makes sure that any areas that are bare gets a nice thick coating of seed. So I got that in pretty thick. Now we're gonna go over it with the garden weasel, just make sure that we get it into the soil. And after we get this, this barrier area done, then we'll go ahead with the spreader and go over the main part of the lawn. Oh, that's Billy in the background. I'm gonna hand seed these bare areas in the back and then we're gonna go over it with the spreader. Make sure it's nice and thick. So I put half the bag in the spreader here and the purpose of that is so that I can focus my efforts in the backyard where it's extra thin and only do a light coating in the front where it really doesn't even need an overseed. It's pretty thick out there. You're going to want to make multiple passes with your spreader going in two different directions to make sure that you get nice even coverage. Don't be afraid to adjust the spreader setting as you go along. If you see a thinner section in your lawn, I would increase the spreader setting slightly to put down a little more seed. And if you see a thicker section in your lawn, like I have in my front lawn, I go ahead and lower the setting to apply a little less seed there. You want to get the most seed where you need it the most. The next thing we're going to do is put down some starter fertilizer, which will help this grass seed get a kickstart once it starts growing. Now that we have both the seed and the starter fertilizer down, we need to get the seed in contact with the soil. This is called seed to soil contact, and it's very important because if the seed is not touching the soil, it's not gonna grow. Now you can do this in a variety of ways. You can spread peat moss over the top of it, or you can lightly top dress it with topsoil or compost. Being that my yard is about 18,000 square feet, this would require an awful lot of material and take me a long time. 
Another option is to use a garden weasel, which I did do on the smaller sections, uh, but doing that over the, heart, the whole yard would just take a very long time and it would probably tear up most of the yard that's in, in pretty good shape. So the option that I use is I like to drag behind a, a fence section. Here it is right here. And what that will do is work the seed into the, into the soil and it will also push it down. So the tractor tires, it will push down on the soil and the fence will work the seed down into the soil. So let's go ahead and get to work. I just finished the lawn drag, and again, the whole point of that is to get the seeds in good contact with the soil. We're gonna use Tenacity as our pre-emergent, and first I suggest you clean out your tank sprayer. If you've used your tank sprayer recently to spray other chemicals, flush it out twice with this tank spray cleaner, and then flush it out twice with water. You wanna make sure none of those chemicals get onto your newly seeded lawn. The Tenacity comes with a little squeegee bottle to show you how much chemical to apply per gallon of water. Make sure you don't over apply, otherwise you'll turn your existing lawn white. Tenacity is one of the only chemicals out there that you can apply at time of seeding, and it will last about 30 days and it will help to prevent weeds from coming up. Because we're using this as a pre-emergent, we're not gonna apply any surfactant. I'm going to reapply this 30 days after the seed germinates. So probably in about 40 or 45 days. Spraying tenacity is optional in the overseed process. However, I highly suggest it because as soon as you aerate and start stirring up the soil, you're gonna bring weed seeds to the surface and you don't wanna see weeds crowding out your newly planted grass. You can use a marking die, or I haven't had great luck with marking dies before. I've ended up getting my fingers all blue, even with gloves. So what I do is just mark my end line, and then I walk a nice, nice straight line back and forth, looking for landmarks. So the next thing up is to go ahead and water. So I'm gonna turn the sprinklers on. I'm gonna run them 10 minutes a zone, three times a day for the first couple of weeks. You wanna make sure that the seed stays moist at all times, because if the seed dries out, it's not gonna be able to grow. This concludes our overseed project for today. I hope I gave you guys some great information and tips and tricks so that you can go into the winter strong and come out of the spring even stronger with a much thicker and healthier turf. With that, I'm Jeff for Here We Mow again. Thanks so much for watching this video to the end. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and leave your comments down below. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.